Hi everyone, here is Nina with another tutorial about Grasshopper. Uh, we are going to develop and continue the last two tutorials. Please watch them. I put the link here down and let's get to it. In previous tutorials, we saw how to make a simple ring, how to rotate this, and how to, uh, how to choose a specific surface to assign points and then uh, assign spheres, for example. Now, in this tutorial, we are going to see how to de uh, deform uh, the whole ring and then assign the spheres. So I start again from the previous algorithm. After we rotated the simple ring, we are going to use a component called taper that you can find it under transform, morph and taper. Uh, this component will deform the object toward or away from an axis. So what we are going to do is to create a bounding box that will contain this ring inside so then I can I can find the center of this object having the center I can create a z-axis for the transformation so here I uh, hold alt to move these components because I want to use this one for the transformation. I connect the geometry, I need to find the axis or the center at first. So the bounding box you can find under surface and primitive bounding box. You put the object inside, you will see that the bounding box will contain the whole object to find the center, I go to surface analysis and I have two components, area or volume. I can use both in this case because it is a simple uh, object. I connect uh, to the both components so you can see using panel uh, what is going, what is uh, happening inside. So as you see the center point, centroid, is the same for both components. In this case, I use area, so I just delete this one. To create this axis, I go to curve and under primitive, I choose line SDL, which means line segment defined by start point. So it needs a start point, direction and length. Start point, we said that we are going to use this point. For the direction, we are going to Z unit and we are going to use the Z unit and for the length, we can put any number we want. Now you see the axis here and we can connect it to the component. Now we are going to define two radius, one in a start point of this axis and the other at the end point. So we are going to use, uh, for example, a number slider and we will see the change of our object. Now I just turn off this uh, previous object and the bounding box. As you see, the ring is changed from exactly the middle of the of the ring, but I want to I want to uh, move this line upper because I don't want the change happens in the middle of the ring, but a little bit upper. So I have almost my circle for the ring. To do this, I need to move this line a little bit upper. So to move the line, I go to transform Euclidean and then move component. 
I connect the line to the geometry and here I need a, again a vector. I want it to go to the Z direction. I can just copy uh, this vector and connect it to the move component. I use a number slider to control the uh, vector. If you see, this is the first line and then now I can move it on Z axis. I just turn off the other one and connect it to the component. As you see, the deformation now depends on the position of this line or vector. I want to move it a little bit upper. So I have almost my circle here. And and now I will change the parameters of my taper or transformation. Now you can see in different views how the ring is changed. Interesting. Now we can uh, connect this uh, component to the, the construct BREP that we had in the last tutorial. Now we can change the number of the spheres or points or we can change the radius of spheres. Here I would like to have a smaller sphere so I change the radius to 0, 05 and I will um, put more points. Now I will bake these spheres so I will have these objects and I will uh, assign group and uh, to have them in uh, Rhino and then I will also bake this ring. Another parameter that can change the shape of the object is the epsilon axis. If I move this line on epsilon axis I will be able to change I can copy and paste this component move component and then uh, put the y axis instead of z axis as you see now if I connect the previous line to this I can move this on y axis and I can move it also on x-axis. So now I have two parameters to control the shape of the ring. Now I connect this to the transformation. As you see now the form is changed a lot because now it is going to use this line as an axis for the formation. So if I move it closer, it will change in a way. And, and if I go farther, so you see the change. That is not bad. But to do this, we can use another component that will make this easier. If you go to vector and here you choose vector x, uh, y, z. Now you can just connect this number slider to this component and use one of this one, the one of these move components. So I just connect this vector to my move component and I eliminate this too. Now you can control both um, y and z component through this vector. Here is our new deformation. We just added a new uh, part to the previous tutorial. So if you don't know how to make a simple ring, please watch the previous tutorials and here you see how to slice the outer surface and assign points and spheres. So see you for the next tutorial.